Alvin. And the chipmunks. Jesus Christ, where do I even start? Alvin and the Chipmunks on paper is such a weird film series in the sense of how popular it became. Let me explain. I'm sure most of you watching this video have nostalgia for the original movies from the 2000s, but they've actually existed since the 1950s. From humble beginnings. It was created by Ross Bagdasarian. He was born on the 27th of January 1919 in Fresno, California to an Armenian-American family. Ross wanted to become an actor and went to New York to find some work. But when World War II started, he served four years as a control tower operator. During this time, he travelled across Europe and was stationed in Sevilla in Spain. And this heavily influenced his stage name of Dave Seville. After the war, Ross started songwriting. And his first major success came with the song, Come On In My House. And this song was initially rejected by many record companies for being too ethnic. Yikes. This song was eventually picked up, however, and ended up selling a million copies. Ross then moved on to writing novelty records and had a transcontinental hit with the song The Trouble With Harry, which was inspired by the Hitchcock film of the same name. Ross continued down the path of novelty records and created the unique sound of the Chipmunks by experimenting with the speed on a tape recorder he bought for $200, which is about $2,000 in today's money. He spent literally his family life savings to create the Chipmunks, and they were instantly a huge success, with Witch Doctor and the Chipmunk song both reaching number one in America. The success of the Chipmunks resulted in the virtual band getting their own CBS animated television show in the 60s, and this had Ross Bagdasarian voicing the Chipmunks and Dave Seville himself. Ross Bagdasarian sadly passed away on the 16th of January 1972 of a heart attack, so he didn't get to see the resurgence in popularity of his virtual band in the modern landscape. And you could say that the original Chipmunk cartoons are crude and are of low quality, but you can't say that they have no soul or charm to them. The Chipmunks later saw success in the 1980s with an NPC series which eventually introduced the Chipettes that we all know and love today. The creators of the 80s show wanted to modernise the Chipmunks but also keep the original spirit of them. The show had important messages to kids and fleshed out all the Chipmunks so anyone could relate to one of them. And because of this they received many letters from fans thanking them for making a show that meant something to people. You could tell that the Chipmunks were a genuine idea with a person who had a true passion behind his creation. And the people behind the 1980s show wanted to preserve Ross's original idea and honour it in the best way possible, by also expanding it in a natural way. And if you have followed my channel, or have acknowledged the modern media landscape in general, you understand that you can't just add soul and charm to a media product. Something like that just can't be cheated. The three gods in Hinduism are known as Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, with each one of them being known as the creator, the protector, and also the destroyer. This has been compared to some other media franchises such as Lord of the Rings, with J.R.R. Tolkien being the creator, Christopher Tolkien being the protector, and Simon Tolkien being the destroyer. The creator is the original vision behind the work. The protector makes sure that they honour the creator's world and vision, and the destroyer, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? So this brings us to the live-action Chipmunks movies. The Chipmunks were a huge success in the USA, so I could see many of you knowing about the Chipmunks already. But as someone who lives outside the States, before watching a featurette on my DVD as a kid, I had no idea that they were so popular before. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys watching this around my age had the same experience too. The Chipmunks have always stayed in the zeitgeist. I think particularly because the live-action films are so messed up that they actually are quite memeable. To be fair to them, they never truly lost relevancy, have they? Now, it's important to note that Ross Bagdasarian's son helped out with both the 80s cartoon and the live-action films. Oh god. Maybe comparing the Chipmunks lore to the Hindu gods was wrong. Is he really the protector and destroyer of this media franchise? It's been a while since I've seen the movies, so I hope I'm wrong. We didn't want to make a movie that was just for four-year-olds or for five-year-olds. We, we wanted that group who'd grown up with them in the 80s and 90s who were now in their 20s to have something that was smart enough, sassy enough, and fun enough for them not only to recognize the characters from their childhood, but to still be able to enjoy them. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Remember that quote, guys? That might come in handy later. 
To be fair to the guy, he had been working to make a live action film of the Chipmunks possible since 1997 and even had Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg to direct and produce it at one point. I wonder how that would have turned out, because the 90s was before good old Zemeckis went a bit, well, crazy. It's all about eating, <laughs> drinking, killing, and fornicating. If the passion is really behind this project, what went wrong? I mean, Jesse McCartney, who was the voice of Theodore, was a huge Chipmunks fan and he even studied the 1980s cartoon for his role in the film. You see, there is a lot of elements here to make a solid, faithful adaptation. The writer of this first movie is John Vitti, who wrote many classic Simpsons episodes, and Tim Hill, the former writer of Rocco's Modern Life and SpongeBob SquarePants, ended up directing it. In a way that rings some alarm bells, I can't lie. I get where Ross's son is coming from in the sense of making a film that also grew up with the Chipmunks fans, but were Simpsons and Rocco's Modern Life writers really the best fit for the Chipmunks? Well, those online review scores tell me otherwise. But hey, let's take off the rose-tinted glasses and really see if these films are any good. The movie starts with the Chipmunks singing Bad Day in the Woods. At this point, they're just wild animals. How do they know this song, do you ask? Who knows? The actual CGI on the Chipmunks for 2007 isn't that bad, but man, I really think that they messed up the design on them. The Chipmunks are designed in this movie to be more realistic rather than cartoony, and they just look a bit off. Again, maybe this was a choice in line with the Chipmunks fans growing up, but I think that the design ends up appealing to no one. The idea for the Chipmunks weren't originally designed specifically for kids, and although kids do love them, they could have easily struck a balance between the two. I've never seen anyone prefer the live action designs to the cartoon ones, and that's because I think they just completely missed the mark. The Chipmunk designs are meant to be like their personalities, as they're meant to be bright and vibrant and stick out from the crowd, but making them so dark and realistic just makes them so visually unappealing. So the tree that they are singing on eventually gets cut down, and they get transported into the city. We then get introduced into Jason Lee as Dave Seville, and I'm sure you guys know Jason Lee as the Great Syndrome in The Incredibles. Dave is late for a meeting at a record label to show off his amazing songwriting skills, but before he can get there, Dave runs into his love interest Claire, and their chemistry is absolutely astounding. How's it going? I haven't seen you since, uh... So Dave's issue is that he's falling around and not interested in a serious relationship. Like why? Why is he like this? Who knows, they never say. Also, it's clear as day that Jason Lee could not care less about being in this movie. It was just a paycheck for him. I don't know if this was down to direction, but again, it's a shame that the role of Dave went to a guy who gives off a performance of, I really, really, really don't want to be here at all. What a fun day that was. <laughs> Ever? Hey, hey, hey! Stop doing it! Turn that off! Oh no! Dave arrives at his meeting at Jet Records, and the chipmunks arrive at the same time in the tree that they're on. I just want to know how the hell they added lights around the tree and didn't spot the chipmunks. Surely that's physically impossible. After this, we're introduced into the best part of the franchise. David crosses Ian Hawke, and he's been Dave's friend since college. He's a record company CEO who's so egotistical, and honestly, he absolutely kills the role with what was given to him. He's just such a dickhead for the whole movie, and you really buy that this guy is living on a completely different plane of existence to everyone else. He really feels like a Simpsons character at points. Dave! Let's talk about your song, Dave. Well, as crazy as it sounds, uh... Your song sucks, Dave. What? Your song? It's awful. I hate it. There is no sense in writing songs that no one is ever, ever going to sing. Just subtle things like him looking so pissed off that he has to meet Dave that he has to put on a face. It just shows that he really cared about this role. It's not amazing or anything, but little things like that show the clear difference in effort compared to his co-star Jason Lee. So Dave gets his dreams absolutely shattered when Ian plays his song. Your song? It's awful. I hate it. If I wasn't your friend, I'd say, Dave, you go right back out of this office and you keep writing music. Jesus Christ. You see what I mean? This guy's brutal. 
Dave then steals a basket of muffins from Jet Records for seemingly just out of spite. Why are we meant to like this guy again? I haven't seen any relatable or likeable tropes from him yet. It doesn't matter that they offered you the muffins before and now they deny you. You don't just steal the whole basket, what's wrong with this guy? Oh, the basket was a plot device so the chipmunks could escape from the building. That's a pretty convoluted way to do that, no? In a fit of rage, Dave throws away all his musical equipment. This is an amazing scene, and I can see the direct inspiration from the amazing movie Citizen Kane. Hello, gorgeous. Wow. We've hit the mother load. We've also hit the product placement. Dave finds the chipmunks eventually, and after some hilarious moments, they end up killing him. You guys, he's dead! Don't panic! Wipe everything down! I'll need three garbage bags, a shovel, some disinfectant, some latex gloves... What the hell, Alvin? You can see why they became such a meme, can't you? What's this thing? Hey, hey, hey! Stop doing it! Turn that off! Do you really not want to do that line again? You really ought to pay that utility bill, Dave. You ever heard of a credit rating? How does Simon know this? Dave kicks them out, but when the chipmunks start singing, Dave immediately sees the dollar signs and lets them in. <laughs> and it's not explained how specifically these chipmunks can speak, but we find out what happened to their parents. Our parents were hippies. They left early to join a commune. So could their parents speak? Can other animals speak? What's happening? Guys. We're going to have food all winter, so if you start storing it, it's going to get gross, and we're going to have rodent. Probably best not to use slurs, Dave. They recorded the Christmas Time Is Here song, and we get the first Alvin of the series. Alvin! Wow, that was so convincing, Jason Lee. Well done. He brings the chipmunks to Ian so that they can perform the song, but they end up having stage fright. Seriously? The chipmunks? Stage fright? I guess this was just for padding out the runtime. And not only do the chipmunks ruin Dave's pitch, but they also graffiti his work presentation and get him fired. If I made a list of my worst days ever, guess what? Today would be at the top of the list. And it's still early. Clam it, Sudsy. Why is there such a pause in Dave's reaction? Did the film editor just get bored or something? Dave and Claire start their date, and are somehow eating a slow roast that was somehow made in about half an hour. And this makes no sense because up until half an hour ago, Dave forgot the date was even happening. And of course, for no reason, Alvin decides to ruin the date, and make Dave seem incredibly creepy. Oh, baby. Dave tells Claire the truth about why the date is so weird and Claire decides to leave the house. Rightfully so, if you ask me. You haven't changed at all. Don't go, I, I can explain. What do you mean he hasn't changed at all? Was he claiming to talk to chipmunks beforehand? Dave starts to write a note saying that they can't stay anymore, but they leave the house without even telling him. Hmm, I wonder if that will come back later. I think that was somehow worse than the first. Alvin! They go over to Ian to show their talent, and the chipmunks become an overnight success. That video of your little guys? 10 million hits already on YouTube! It gets to Christmas, and Dave opens the presents with them. Does Dave just not have a family? I need this Dave Seville lore. And Dave gets the chipmunks saving bonds for Christmas. Is that shit even legal? And after Ian sorts out a press event for them, they're a massive hit with everyone. Ian has plans to milk the chipmunks to death, but Dave suddenly cares for the chipmunks. He's almost as bad as Ian though. He doesn't really like them, does he? Dave only wants the money and fame too. Theodore finds the note that Dave wrote earlier about getting rid of them, and they contact Ian so he can have full control of them. Great. It was about time that there was a misunderstanding plot in this kid's film. I was really missing it. At least we get this Sigma line from Ian. I told you, Dave. Never lose. So Ian literally works them to the point that they don't sleep. This guy is straight up evil. I'm pretty sure that's against the Geneva Conventions. This is absurd. I feel like P. Diddy with fur. Uh, what was that, Alvin? P. Diddy with fur. That is probably one of the most poorly aged lines I've ever heard. So Dave decides to try and save the chipmunks from Ian at their show. 
but security end up pulling him away. When the chipmunks see this, they decide to ruin their own performance, but Ian steals them back and tries to send them to Paris for their next show. And I would say that a high speed chase ensues, but the chipmunks trick Ian and are in Dave's car the whole time. I feel like 20 minutes are missing from this movie. There's barely a climax. So Dave ends up getting with Claire, but the movie can't end without the series signature line. <laughs> We didn't want to make a movie that was just for four-year-olds or for five-year-olds. We, we wanted that group who'd grown up with them in the 80s and 90s who were now in their 20s to have something that was smart enough, sassy enough, and fun enough for them not only to recognize the characters from their childhood, but to still be able to enjoy them. So yeah, that was Alvin and the Chipmunks. And yeah, it's not very good. It completely missed the mark on why people love the Chipmunks. They were a virtual novelty band at heart, and making a movie done by a Simpsons writer just makes the film feel very tonally confused. Ian Hawke seems like a character straight from The Simpsons or something, and he just feels very disconnected from everything else. That with the fart jokes and other immature weird humour results in a film that only really appeals to very little kids. I mean, I did enjoy it when I was younger, so that makes sense. But again, the original shows fleshed out each character and gave a message that viewers could connect with. But here, the chipmunks feel extremely similar. They have their original traits on a surface level, but the message of this movie of Family Matters is just too broad to fit into any of their personalities. And the message itself doesn't work when Dave barely cares about them anyway. And near the start of the movie when the chipmunks introduce themselves, Theodore doesn't even explain what his personality is like the other two do. I know it's played off as a joke, but I think it says a lot about the movie. And yeah, you could say he speaks about caring for family a lot more than the other two, but the other two still care about it, and this just makes the chipmunks feel very interchangeable from one another. It's not really the worst film I've ever seen. It was a pretty easy watch at least, but nah. Sadly, this franchise was already dead on arrival. The first movie was a huge hit, and earned $360 million on a $60 million budget. It's safe to say the Chipmunks were here to stay. So of course, the plans for the second Alvin and the Chipmunks movie were already underway. The second movie called Alvin and the Chipmunks The Squeakquel was released just two years later on the 23rd of December 2009. The film was written again by Simpsons writer John Vitti, but it was also co-wrote by Jonathan Abel and Glenn Berger who wrote the Kung Fu Panda movies. So again, I don't know what the hell happened here. And the film's director was Betty Thomas, who has made some very below average comedy films. Originally, Dave Seville was meant to have a much larger role in this movie, but it was actually reduced due to Jason Lee's filming schedule for My Name Is Earl. Wow, how convenient. That series helped you dodge a bullet, didn't it? During the actual production of the movie, most of his involvement was rewritten, and Zachary Levi as Toby Seville replaced a lot of his scenes. And of course, this is the movie that introduced the Chipettes, which to be fair makes sense for the progression of this franchise. But I digress, let's just get into this movie. Oh god, he said it like he knows that everyone hates these movies. The movie starts off with the chipmunks performing on stage, and everyone loves them. And when I mean everyone, there are even Inuits in an igloo watching the chipmunks on a flat screen. This is the most ridiculous scenes I've ever watched. Dave gets annoyed at Alvin because it's a charity event and he shouldn't take the spotlight. And I don't think this makes any sense. The chipmunks are there to put on a great show regardless of what it's for. I just genuinely don't get that point. Alvin, will you please get down from there? Also, there's no way that Dave and Alvin could hear each other. Did the filmmakers forget how sound works? Alvin! Well, you deserve that one, Dave. At least you get to be out the movie. So Dave says he signed them up for school and put Simon in charge. Finally, I hope we get to see some character development. The chipmunks end up getting looked after by their aunt Jackie and her grandson Jimmy Fallon. Uh, I mean Shazam. Uh, I mean Zachary Levi. Uh, sorry, I mean Toby Seville. What's his character, do you ask? He's a gamer, and he needs to be in first place all the time. Huh, what? What happened? Pew, 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 with his thumbs all day. Going pew, 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 with my thumbs right now is keeping me in first place, so that's important. 
Lol, look how much of a loser he is. And because he's such a loser, he almost kills his aunt. So now it's up to Jimmy Fallon to look after them. I'm sure this is going to turn out well. To be fair, it looks like the chipmunks went through a little redesign. They look a bit more cartoony and less realistic than they did before. At least that's a good change in my book. Alvin? Holla, the cheese balls are in the his house. It didn't take long for the highly processed junk food product placement aimed at little kids, did it? I'm sorry, but how is this meant to appeal to anyone but kids? I don't know why they thought that the fans of the show growing up would like something that is more immature than the original series. Alvin lies on the phone to say that Aunt Jackie is okay and everything is fine in the house. But Dave doesn't believe it and we hear, well, Alvin again. Alvin, I'm not kidding. Feel better. Alvin! It gets better every time. The chipmunks arrive at the most 2000s looking school of all time. And it makes no sense. Why would they accept chipmunks into a normal school? It's a miracle that they weren't stepped on. It's like in the movie Stuart Little when he goes into school. It makes no sense. So this is a classroom. I love the smell of zip cream in the morning. I love references to 70s war films in a kids movie. Alvin starts rizzing up the girls and they actually seem attracted to him. This movie is messed up, man. And this makes the generic evil bully jock mad at them. Somebody's gonna have to knock those guys down to size. And thankfully, David Cross returns in the sequel. And now Ian is homeless for some reason? And looking for scraps? Are they trying to say that because of the chipmunks he lost all of his money? That's crazy. For all of his shortcomings, he was a good businessman. The chipettes literally just show up in a FedEx package, which is really weird. And they go to Ian who sees their potential and intends to use them to get his career back on track. That, that's a good look for you. What is wrong with this guy? They end up attacking the bullies and it's the chipmunks who get in trouble. Well, I mean, they're staying true to what schools are actually like, I guess. The principal explains that they are losing their music program, but the district runs a music competition annually that has a prize of $25,000. So if the chipmunks can win their big competition, the music program can keep running. It does help that the principal is a big chipmunks fan, like a massive chipmunks fan. What the hell? After realising that Alvin is somehow amazing at dodgeball, the jocks that once hated him before suddenly want him to be on the football team. Wow, I wonder if he's going to start ignoring his less popular brothers now. Just go, Alvin. Really? You need it? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I'll be right back. They then try to add a subplot that Toby is in love with one of his former classmates who works at the school. Like, who cares? There's already a bunch of other shit happening in this movie, and Toby is just so uninteresting. Ian brings the chipettes in front of the principal, and they get such a good reaction from the students that there's now a mini competition between the two bands on who will get to perform for the district music competition. For God's sake, this is a bit contrived, isn't it? I am so happy that Ms. Ortega can rehearse with us every day after school. Whoa! Every day? But Ryan and I have- Alvin, stop right there, okay? We're a team. We need you. And again, this is where Alvin and Simon fall out because Alvin's spending a lot of time with the jocks. Again, it was about time there was some unneeded conflict. This movie is trying to tick all the boxes of a generic kids film, just like the first one. Dave finds out that Aunt Jackie is in the hospital and Toby is the sole person looking after them, so he tries to get home himself. This is the only family members we know about in the Seville law, so why didn't they spend Christmas with them? And now we have the Lyra reveal moment. You knew about this, Alvin? Does the word brother mean anything to you? Y yes, of course. Alvin lied? Oh no. And because Alvin is in the football team, he might miss the music performance. Again, this conflict makes zero sense. What could Alvin actually do on the football team? The rodent is just going to get stepped on. But of course, Alvin is just naturally amazing at American football. Because of course. Yeah, by the way guys, what happened to Claire? I've literally just thought of that when recording this. Did she just disappear from the other movies? What even happened to her? Oh, it's because Cameron Richardson strongly disliked being in the first movie. <laughs> lol. So anyway, when it comes to the music standoff, Ian just can't help himself and tells the other two chipettes that they are basically terrible and that they shouldn't get in Britney's way. I just want to let you know not to get in Britney's way. Oh. 
And obviously Alvin doesn't show up to the concert and the Chipettes win by de facto. Great, there's even some more scenes of his brothers hating him. Simon, are you awake? God, this movie is just so repetitive and annoying. I can't believe that they stretched this paper thin plot to an hour and a half. And then Theodore runs off to the zoo for some reason because he's so upset at Alvin. But we get this great scene where they make up with each other. He's my brother. Not that he'd know that. Because I've been such a big jerk lately. My God, can this movie just end now, please? Please. And now the Chipettes have already gotten so big that Ian doesn't let them play at the school. I can't believe it took them this long to figure out that Ian is a bad person. The Chipettes get locked in a cage and the Chipmunks have to go over to save the day. Didn't Alvin mention in the first one that they could easily escape a cage by themselves because they're talking Chipmunks? We are talking Chipmunks, Dave. We can get out of a cat carrier. We are talking Chipmunks, Dave. We can get out of a cat carrier. Why do the Chipettes need to be saved? This movie doesn't even follow its own rules and it just gives me a headache. Alvin ends up saving the Chipettes, but not before Ian shouts, Alvin! Alvin! Jesus Christ, whoever sorted out the mic levels on David Cross should have been fired. Oh. Ha ha, so funny. The Chipmunks and the Chipettes get back to the concert on time and sing together instead. Aw, how cute. And Toby gets with that girl from earlier. What? Where did that come from? So yeah, that was the second Chipmunks movie. And it stinks. Like, really bad. This one is so much more annoying and boring than the first. David Cross isn't even funny in this one. There's too many plot points and most of them go nowhere. The Chipettes are nothing characters. I can't name anything about them. Or how they're even different to the Chipmunks. And the annoying family film tropes are also just too ripe in this. It's disgusting. There's no integrity to the original source material. It's just junk. First class junk. There's two more of these as well. Oh god, kill me now. The sequel was an even bigger hit than the first movie, as it grossed $440 million on a $70 million budget. That's big money. And that's why they released the sequel just two years later on the 16th of December 2011. It was written by the Kung Fu Panda people again, which is just insane. And the director is Mike Mitchell. You know, the one who did Kung Fu Panda 4. I'm just so shocked that DreamWorks would get a director who made this bloody movie. Oh well, their loss. This is also the last film with David Cross. And he described working on this movie as the most miserable experience I've ever had in my professional life. David Cross had a show called The Increasingly Poor Decisions of Todd Margaret, and he created it and he also starred in it. And this was around the time that the third Chipmunks movie was going to be filmed. He knew that the two productions were going to clash, and it was especially important he knew the dates because people's livelihoods working on the TV series were going to be affected if he didn't know the dates. David Cross kept asking the Chipmunks producers, but they kept saying nothing about it, until he randomly got a phone call saying that he had to be in Hawaii to film the movie. This was especially bad considering his TV show was filmed all the way in England. The character is only, literally only as scripted, only in a pelican costume, mm -hmm. or a, whatever the costume is. I'm like, well, clearly I don't have to go on the cruise ship. I can fly back to London and, you know. Somebody else can be in, in the pelican costume. Yeah, yeah. And then the woman's like, uh, they're like, no, you have a distinctive walk, but as scripted, they you're not supposed to know it's my character until later. So even the audience is not supposed right. to know. Even the audience isn't supposed <laughs> to know. So it's just like, well, now you're just being shitty. Oh my God. That was all unnecessary, wasn't it? So yeah, let's just get into this shit. So like normally it starts off with a shitty rendition of a pop song. And the movie actually starts with Dave and the gang about to board a cruise ship. Don't worry, family vacations are all about fun. Man, I've never seen a guy look so dumb with a franchise more than Jason Lee. So Alvin just ends up causing havoc on the cruise ship for no reason. And we just get unfunny scene after unfunny scene. I mean, this eventually just becomes an ad for a cruise holiday. Alvin! That's probably your best one, mate. Well done. Now we have the same conflict in the other movies, but just with Alvin. Since when did the other chipmunks suddenly get way more mature than him? Dave ends up having dinner with the captain to apologise for some reason. 
And yeah, it's just really weird. Why would he do that? And Alvin's first thought is to go to the casino and gamble. Hey, maybe Alvin is relatable after all. What's wrong with this movie? It's for babies! What, and the chipmunks aren't meant for babies? So anyway, even though Dave told them to stay in their room tonight, they leave anyway to do other things on the cruise ship. The chipettes end up pissing off the other people on the dance floor because they're so bloody tiny. And this results in a painful dance off. You can easily tell that there was like no plot for this movie. And coincidentally, Ian Hawke is working on the exact same cruise ship as the one they went on. And here he is to get revenge for the other movies. Look, I like you Ian mate, but just let it go. Alvin and Simon get busted for gambling and Ian snitches on the captain to both of them. Bloody snitch. Ian, just like kill them or something. I don't care about that, but just no one likes a snitch, do they? The captain allows the chipmunks one last activity. But of course, Alvin messes it up and they go flying off the ship. And this happens with Ian and Dave as well. Man, I can't wait for this wacky adventure. Both parties find an island, but not before we get this incredible line by Ian. Take the suit off then. I can't. Why not? I'm not wearing anything underneath. Great joke for a kid's movie, guys. My god. I don't hear any planes. Or helicopters. Hang on, this is just Madagascar again. I'm a survivor. I'm a is it just them stuck on the island the whole time singing annoying pop songs? Is there really nothing new in this movie? They start to steal food and not trust each other. So if you've seen any other movie or show with this sort of premise, you have seen this movie before. It's just so bland, oh my god. My precious, my precious. Great Lord of the Rings reference guys, I'm sure the kids are gonna love that one. So they eventually run into a human on the island called Zoe, and she's been stuck there for years and years. It's been that long that she doesn't even know who the chipmunks are. I'm pleased to introduce my friends. This is Rawling, Spalding, Calloway, Dunlop, and right there, that's Nerf. Haha, <laughs> do you get the castaway reference, kids? So because Zoe is a bit reckless and, well, insane, Eleanor sprains her ankle and Simon gets bit by a spider. And this changes his personality. Would you care to join me on my adventure? What adventure? The adventure called the life! Really? This is the exact same shit as the Buzz Lightyear scenario in Toy Story. It's just a straight up copy of that. Alive, they're superstars, sure. But dead, they're legends. I'm talking about tribute albums, pay-per-view funerals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everything in this movie is padding. The scenes with Dave and Ian are just Ian stating how much he hates the chipmunks. And then Dave thinks that Ian is being unfair. And that's all there is to these scenes. Zoe brings the chipmunks to this waterfall which has some secret gold behind it in a cave. Simon finds a bit of the gold and Zoe secretly laughs to herself because of the monetary potential of the cave. Don't you just love a twist villain that has no prior setup? I think I know why Dave hasn't come. You do? Why? Because he's not even looking. <laughs> and we have another scene where Theodore finds out something that he shouldn't. This shit is like Groundhog Day. But then it turns out that the volcano on the island is about to erupt. What? Are they making up this shit as they go along or something? But anyway, Theodore and Simon find Dave and Ian, and Alvin eventually makes up with him. So through the power of family, they all make a raft to get off the island. But before they can leave, they realise that Simon and Jeanette aren't with them. And Jeanette gets trapped by Zoe. Jeanette is forced to find more gold while the volcano erupts. And again, nobody cares. I don't know a single thing about this Zoe character. At least David Cross was a funny villain. What does Zoe bring to the Chipmunks franchise? But they eventually find Zoe and we get a slow-mo Alvin. Alvin! That was epic. And Zoe's about to kill Dave for letting the chipmunks get away. But Ian stops her by having a heart to heart. And I know I keep saying this, but this shit is so soulless, man. This is one of the most low effort kids movies I've ever seen. Hate, anger, regret. Those aren't just members of a girl group I'm one side. <laughs> but no, because it is a low effort kids movie, everyone escapes the island just fine. Wow, that's one of the best transitions I've ever seen. And like any great kids movie, it ends on a dance number. Good to be back, huh? Sure is. And Ian is finally the good guy. 
Wow, amazing movie. Amazing writing. So yeah, screw this movie. It's awful. I think the films have gotten worse every time. It's honestly one of the worst films I've ever seen. I don't know what to even say about it. It's just completely soulless. There's nothing even of note. It's just absolutely shit. And it's just a rehash of the other movies. And this movie made $340 million on an $80 million budget. So it didn't do as well as the previous installment. But it obviously made enough to warrant a sequel. I really can't believe that there are four of these. And I can't believe that I'm having to sit through all of this crap. The things I do for you guys, I hope you appreciate it. On the 18th of December 2015, Alvin and the Chipmunks The Road Chip was unleashed into the world. The directors and writers of this movie aren't even really of note this time around. It's just more washed up comedy writers of the 90s. I'm really not looking forward to this movie man, and I hate that I have to watch it. And I also hate how David Cross isn't even in this one. But alas, let's get this shit over with. All I have to do is watch one more movie. Let's just do it. So the film starts off with the Chipmunks filming a birthday message for Dave. They plan a surprise birthday party for him and also for the Chipettes for leaving to go to American Idol. It's kind of funny how they clearly have no idea what to do with the Chipettes so they just write them out of this movie. But anyway, to start off, this is easily the best redesign I've seen for the Chipmunks. And I'm all for it. They still don't look that good to be honest. But it's the most cartoony I've seen them and it really fits. Especially considering how much these movies appeal to babies. Happy birthday, Dave! Oh my god. It's Red Foo with the big afro. Why the hell is he in this? The editing is just awful, my god. What's happening? Are we trying to start a new trend or something? The Juicy Wiggle. What? He's an older looking Jason Lee, and hey, at least he's learned how to shout Alvin a bit better. Alvin! We are very mature. Oh god, stop. I'm trying to start a new chapter in my life, a more stable chapter, where you guys aren't performing in a different city every night. Oh my god, I take that back. That is the worst acting I've seen from him so far. That was absolutely shocking. That was diabolical. So over a game of mini golf, Dave says that his new relationship with a woman called Samantha is getting serious. So he plans to introduce her to the chipmunks. And this dickhead just starts bullying the chipmunks when they're at the golf course. Let's compromise and we'll call it no one's ball. Hey! What's the point of even including this? So anyway, the chipmunks eventually meet Samantha and oh my god, the bully is her son Miles. What a twist. Miles keeps bullying them and sells Theodore for $20 to some fat kid. So in turn we get this amazing scene. I like big bucks and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't be nice. I don't even know what to say at this point. These movies have defeated me. And this movie just feels like another level of cheap compared to the other two sequels. These transitions in generic pop music result in this one feeling somehow even more soulless than the others. And in this generic pop music scene, Miles meets his love interest, Bella Thorne. Oh, uh, hey, you know what? Let me, uh, let me get this for you. Oh, you know, I, I, I think it's push. This is just a bit creepy, mate. Yeah, why aren't you guys in there? I thought you were like super famous or something. One day, you're throwing back pink lemonades on Diddy's yacht in San Tropez. Why does this franchise like to mention P. Diddy all the bloody time? Are they trying to tell us something? The chipmunks find out that Dave intends to marry Samantha while on a trip in Miami. Well, at least they think that. So let me guess they're going to try and sabotage it for the whole movie because they don't like Miles. But then later on, they find out the true meaning of family and it's all okay. <sighs> just put me out of my misery, please. It's just the same shit over and over. They actually try and steal the engagement ring, which is just way too out of character for them, even for Alvin. And Dave and Samantha put Miles in charge to look after them while they're in Miami. Why are we meant to feel sorry for this bully who abuses animals? Later on, Miles and the Chipmunks plan to go to Miami, but Dave's neighbour keeps an eye on them. To combat this, Alvin drugs wild squirrels to sleep and puts them in Dave's house. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Respect. Thank you. Well, of course Miles would like that. So after some very disturbing airport security scenes, Miles manages to smuggle the chipmunks onto the plane. 
and Alvin gets arrested by an air marshal for sneaking into first class. And get this, the plane has to make an emergency landing because Theodore let all of the animals out of their cages. This is crazy. The air marshal justifiably gets really angry at them. And this actually becomes the second bold villain in the franchise. A flashback shows that his girlfriend broke up with him for liking the live action chipmunks. Again, if you ask me, that's completely justified. I am putting you three on the no-fly list. Oh, this is when they get put on the no-fly list. But they escape from him and decide to get to Miami another way. Ugh. I guess he's going to be chasing them the whole movie now or something. Oh, no! And of course, the drugged-up squirrels from earlier end up backfiring. Who would have thought? Miles and the chipmunks run out of money on the road, so they all end up performing in this random bar they found. The air marshal guy literally gets a taxi to the random bar and somehow finds them. But he's an absolute idiot and causes a bar fight. Beard peanuts? I'm absolutely empty inside. The chipmunks manage to escape, but they run out of money again and end up being homeless. Again, I feel like this is just going through the motions of every single road trip movie ever. Who cares about this when the characters are so nothing? What, you think my dad was thinking about anyone other than himself when he left me and my mom? But I, I, I thought you said your dad was... Wow, I spoke too soon. Miles is really like that because his dad left him when he was young. Miles' father didn't actually die. Wow, this is absolute fire storytelling. Miles must have crocodile tears or something because I can't see a single drop. And after that artificial heart to heart, Miles and the Chipmunks are suddenly friends. This is literally a shit version of Shrek. And through this great music number, we see that they start making money through becoming street performers. Hey now, I go, I go under. Hello boys. How did you find us? <laughs> Bro, no one cares that you found the Chipmunks. Please just leave the movie. I can't believe that you are the David Cross replacement. And because they're in New Orleans, they just start singing Uptown Funk in the street and the crowd love them. And the air marshal guy accidentally gets so drunk that he forgets he's chasing the chipmunks. Yes, this actually happens in the movie. Dave sees this all on TV, however, and he does an Alvin! This movie is just trolling at this point. It has to be. Dave and Samantha meet them and they're obviously really annoyed at them. But Miles and the Chipmunks get to follow them to Miami. Well, they would have done, but the Chipmunks are now on the no-fly list. Dave ends up driving the Chipmunks to Miami. But not before this Chuck E. Cheese advertisement. My god, this is disgusting. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Look what I won. Isn't he cute? <laughs> look at that. Ha ha ha, so funny. Look at this doll you can win at your nearest Chuck E. Cheese. So they make it to Miami and Miles and the Chipmunks are grounded in their hotel room. Dave leaves for his dinner and Alvin steals the ring and they celebrate that they're not getting married. I mean, they're so stupid, they could easily get married without this stupid ring anyway. But Miles feels sad because he thought they bonded over the movie. The Chipmunks were his friends he met along the way. But literally a scene later, they're all peachy again. And oh no, they have to get the ring to Dave because they all like each other again. They attempt to give the ring back, but the bloody air marshal is still in the movie. Let it go, man. But I guess they had to pan out the runtime somehow. Guys, that ring isn't mine. But the whole plot is a misunderstanding. It's not Dave's ring. He's not there to propose to Samantha. He was holding it for his work colleague. Wow. It's almost as if this whole movie is actually pointless. I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in you guys than I am right now. Wow, your acting does not match how you feel at all. The Chipmunks decide that singing will save their relationship with Dave. And they get the Chipettes to leave American Idol just like that to come and help. And your perfection, even in your mistakes. This song is lit. <laughs> Why did they cut to Dave like that? And then Dave adopts them at the end randomly. How on earth were they not adopted before? And the drugged up squirrels push Dave over the edge one last time. Elvis! 
So that was the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise. And yeah, they suck. Especially those sequels, man. They're painful to get through. I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy. I think the first movie is bad, but easily the best. And then honestly, it's a toss-up with the other films. In some ways, they're just as bad as each other. The big issue is, is how formulaic and predictable these movies are. There's only so many times you can find out what the meaning of family is. And it's just too surface level. It's complete corporate bollocks. And thankfully, this movie made 230 million on a 90 million dollar budget. So there was not a sequel, probably because of the dwindling returns. So yeah, these films were so different to Ross Bagdasarian's original vision, weren't they? I think that the Chipmunks should have just stayed in the 50s, to be honest. They were a novelty act that were popular for the time for creating a really unique sound. And that's about it. They didn't need to become this big live action franchise. Because again, say what you want about the Chipmunks, but their original vision wasn't soulless. Will the Chipmunks ever return? I hope not, because you guys know that I'll be there to talk about it. It's junk. First class junk. And